Okay. All right, I'd like to call the meeting to order tonight at 6.30. If we could all start with our Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, Ms. Stewart, can you help us with roll call, please? Yes. Um, President Wilson is absent. Uh, Vice President McIntyre? I'm here. Treasurer Camboytel? I'm here. Trustee Mazurik? Here. Uh, Trustee Meyer? Here. Trustee Prescott? Hi, everyone. I'm here. And Secretary Stewart? Here. Okay. Thank you. All right. Let's go ahead with the, adop the adoption of our agenda. Ms. Stewart, will you read that for us, please? All right. Um, I present motion 89 uh, that the agenda be adopted as presented. Okay, I have a motion properly presented by Ms. Stewart, uh, supported by Ms. Meyer. Do we vote next? Yeah. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays? Okay. All right, motion properly presented and passed. Next, we have our consent resolutions. Okay, um, I bring forth motion 90 uh, that the board accept. Wow, this just got really loud, I feel like, all of a sudden. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, that the board accept the consent agendas. Um, sorry, the consent agenda items for approval as presented. We have 5A, the minutes of the March 19th, 2024 Board of Education meeting. 5B, overnight and out-of-state uh, field trip request, and that's 5B1, Northville Academic Games Elementary competition in Atlanta from April 18th to the 23rd. Uh, 5C, instructional materials for middle school ELA, storyboard that for the 24-25 school year. Uh, 5D, Middle School 11T Library Books Purchase. 5E, Section 127 Plan Document. 5F, Leave of Absence Request for the 23-24 school year. And 5G, um, Canceling the Scheduled Meeting on April 16th, the Committee of the Whole, and adding a special call meeting at 6.30 on April 16th, 2024. And then 5H, bill warrants totaling $3,351,417.46. And that's it. I support it. <laughs> okay, we have a motion properly presented by Ms. Stewart and supported by Dr. Campbell Voitel. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, all right, thank you so much. And next we will move on to our communications report. Okay, uh, we've also received communications at the NPSBOE at NorthvilleSchools.org email address. We've received um, the Wayne Risa board highlights from March 2024 and also the Northville Youth Network program report March 2024. All right, thank you. The only comment I have is on the, the youth network, um, which we get these all the time, just kind of look what's going on. And the only thing that kind of bothered me was kind of the spike in the racial, cultural, and sensitivity. I really thought as a district, I don't know, we're, we're, we're beyond that. I know it never really goes away, but I was just kind of bothered me that the, the, the number of issues there. And again, we're only talking eight or nine, but again, seeing mm -hmm. these spikes, um, you know, hope Beverly kind of recognizes that it's that as a as a society now we gotta you know we, we have to do better, and then the other thing just reminded me was the you know behavioral health you know depression and anxiety mental health just continues to be an issue that we need to pay attention to, and so I just kind of wanted to mention that I know um, it's not a topic for discussion here, but um, it, it bothers me to see those racially and you know insensitive between numbers. No, and I uh, trust in Missouri. I appreciate you uh, noting that in the sense that um, perhaps another reason that we're seeing a rise in it is that when you begin to attend to things like this in a in a straightforward manner, then um, then that's also going to happen. And in the Friday update, I had commented that Meads Mill with each of their eighth grade students. Um, due to a, a letter from a student 
uh, actually did uh, relational circles with each uh, classroom and each student around this very topic. Uh, I was fortunate enough to, to watch both, or two of them went to two circles and participated in one. And, um, you know, our kids uh, are remarkable in the fact that the candor that they demonstrated, the preparation from our teachers and how they handled it. Uh, I participated in a circle at Hillside around such matters. And yes, we would hope that in 2024 that this wouldn't be part of any community. Uh, it is. And I'm proud to say that we are a community public school district that is choosing to go toward these things rather than pretend that they're not happening. And I can't say how proud I am of our teachers and our kids for how they're doing so. And, uh, and I believe we've installed a mechanism to at least begin those conversations. You know, many students, what I heard, um, the kids will say, well, I was just joking. And the hurt, though, the people who had been impacted by those statements were able to elucidate within those circles, uh, I think made a real impression on so many of our students that it's not funny. Uh, it's demeaning and it's hurtful and extended within there. So thank you for noting that. Uh, you know, we're trying. At, at the same time, I know we're putting more emphasis on it. So when you put more emphasis on it, you're going to get more reported items. And so hopefully what we're doing is we're finding smaller issues and finding them early and kind yep. of nipping in the bud. And I hope that's kind of what, what, what I can take away from this. That's absolutely what we're trying to do. And around the mental health and well-being, uh, really actively naming that, going after it, uh, in such ways as well. And to me, if what we're doing is helping to drop some of that stigma where children and families are openly asking for help and support, that's a win. But I think if a person's flying at 30,000 feet, they may look at it differently. Uh, the way I look at it is, yeah, let's go. Uh, I, we do not have time to waste for our children. Uh, and being authentic and real about that and maturely direct is is the in my mind the only way we know. So thanks for noting that. Cool. Um, there's I want to thank you, Mr. Mazurk and Dr. Weber for highlighting and commenting on that. There's um, not a good segue from that, but I, based on the Wayne Risa board highlights, I reached out to Dr. Colbert about um, the um, the path para to pathway to teach educator mm. pathway. Just in, I was just interested in the amount of money that was being spent by Wayne Risa and what kind of programs that the para professionals were taking part in. It's 100% special education, both at Wayne. County, I mean, at Wayne State and at Eastern Michigan. So I was very excited to hear that from her, that we have people who are working right now in the special education setting who are choosing to dive a little more deeply and become special education teachers. So, That's and great. she said, I know we have some teachers, um, paraprofessionals in um, Norfo now that are participating in that program. So uh, I just thought it was really wonderful to hear. And it's wonderful that we can provide that um, for a really needed community to have great teachers. And it's great that they have that experience. So I just wanted to share that. Awesome. Thank so you. Just to add, um, we have nine that are currently in the program. And they're all going for a CI eligibility certification. And then we have one that's going to be starting the cohort next year for ASD. Okay. That's Very great. good. And just to clarify for people that CI is cognitive impairment and ASD is autism spectrum disorder, just for people who maybe are curious about what the link is because there's a lot of it. Thank you. All right, Dr. Weber. Yes. I know uh, we have a great agenda oh boy. plan tonight. So uh, absolutely. Thank you, uh, Acting President McIntyre. So I look. I'm looking at the the um, the presentation and. Uh, Tony uh, Kosky and Brian and I had a conversation today at the track uh, meet, which 620 plus kids, probably the biggest dual meet in the state going on right at Six Mile against our neighbors from uh, next door. Uh, and I looked through the, the slide deck and, you know, parents and students especially, I need you to hear this. When you scroll through and you'll see it and it says champions, 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 and it just keeps going. Please, I beg, do not take any of this for granted. I mean, I know the time and effort your families have put in to helping you be as good as you can be. Uh, it's something that you love. 
please know that this Board of Education, uh, Mr. Smolsky, your coaches, uh, it brings us so much joy to see you excelling in things that you really love. But I will say, and Tony said this, I think this is not normal. I've been in many districts. This is a, a level of, of excellence is truly staggering. So very, very well done. I hope on your fields of competition, you had true joy and fun. I'm sure your parents did and your relatives did. So uh, I'm gonna turn this over to Mr. Samalski right now and he's gonna kick this off. Um, and um, as he's coming up here, any uh, notion on the score of the track? I, boys are winning by quite a bit. Not sure on the okay. girls. All right. I did a little spike maintenance today, so hopefully the, the girl's shoes didn't fall off. I hope. All, right. All righty. Well, um, again, Board of Education, Dr. Weber and his team, thanks for having us here uh, tonight. Um, it's always great to celebrate these teams and these student athletes and these coaches on their great accomplishments. And um, it's greatly appreciated that you guys take pride in, in what we do in extracurriculars um, after school. So um, again, another great season. Like Dr. Weber said, it's not, it's not normal. Um, we're honoring five of our winter teams that had successful seasons um, this year. And, and how we do this, I've never really explained it. The teams we invite are the teams that won a championship or qualified for states in the state tournament. So if we were inviting everyone that won a division or a conference champion, the, every team would almost be here. So um, that is why. But again, thank you for having us. Many, many academic honors and athletic honors um, from this winter. Um, we're going to start off with gymnastics. So if the gymnasts that are here want to come up, uh, we're a little lighter tonight because of the 380 kids at the track meet. So, uh, so, and so gymnast Victoria, our head coach, couldn't make it. So we have two gymnasts, uh, Gabby and Anastasia, are going to speak a little on the season and, and how they did. So our varsity gymnastics had a record year and, and an incredible season. And VG went undefeated in our division, making us division champions. We set goals at the beginning of the season to really work together to qualify for state meet as a team. We placed second at regional, securing our spot as a team, and we also had seven qualify as individuals for the state meet. We took fifth as a team at the MHSAA state finals, which was our highest place finish since 2018. Two individuals placed at individual states. Lauren Morganka placed eighth on beam and Hadley Crab placed second on bars. We are so proud of all we have accomplished and are excited to see MBG continue to make history. Thank you, girls. And, and just for the people in here that don't know, uh, we don't, gymnasts, they practice off-site and um, they do a, a phenomenal job. And this is one of our bigger teams. So again, congratulations, girls, on a great season and coming up here and speaking in front of all these people you don't know. <laughs> I wish I had brought my cowbell. I was, I was famous for all of my daughter's stuff. I'd be banging that cowbell and celebrating that. I haven't, I haven't rang it quite a few years, but I, I'd love to bring it here and celebrate for you guys. But wait, what an accomplishment. Way to go. Great. All right. Up next will be our boys swim and dive team. Uh, another phenomenal year. Traditionally, they have won the division and conference for multiple years in a row. Um, they didn't have a meet very close at all, and they finished fourth place in the state. Uh, Coach Rich couldn't make it tonight. He is um, he's with his swim club out of state. But we have Jen here, our dive coach, and all the swimmers and divers. Can you guys come on up? <coughs> coach Rich sent me some notes. Um, he gets one week off from coaching the entire year, and this happens to be it. But he wanted to thank the school administration, the athletic department, and the board for honoring all of our student athletes tonight. We finished uh, our sixth conference championship in a row mm -hmm. with these boys. So they've never lost a conference championship. 13 swimmers and one diver qualified for Division One state meet. 
five top four state meet finishes since 2006. And we have all state honors that go to the 200 medley relay with Cho, Spicer, Pow, and Philip. The 200 free relay of Spicer, Brooks, Backert, and Stenson. The 400 free relay of Stenson, Hu, Cho, and Philip. 200 free and 500 free for Brady. The 100 free and the 500 free for Philip. And Philip was also the 50 free champion for the state. Mm -hmm. Acer Spice also finished in the 100 breast. Wow. Amazing. That's quite an accomplishment. Never have lost a division, right? right to, to, yeah. to not know losing is kind of a cool thing. It's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. All right. Congratulations again to the Swim and Dive team on another outstanding season. All right. Up next is wrestling. Um, Coach Derek is actually out of town, and because so many of the wrestlers run track, we don't have we didn't have any wrestlers here. All right, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the wrestling team. Um, they, Derek sent me a text, but just offhand, they won the district championship this year, which was the first one in 23 years. So first district championship in, in 23 years for the wrestling program. Um, and then they also, they were the um, Todd Schoenheide tournament runner-up that's a tournament that we host at northville they were the runner-up in that um they were team district champs they made it to regional finals which was the so that means they made it to 16 teams left in the state um so they were they were one of the 16 finalists we had seven individuals qualify for regionals two individuals from that went on to state finals james dunn and zeffin and zeffin took third overall in the state and the wrestling team was also academic all state so not only great on the mat but great in the classroom and this program continues to grow and get better and uh winning that first district in 23 years is a is a nice accomplishment yes. so yeah. all right up next is our alpine ski team the boys so any skiers want to come up? And Sarah's here, who's also an assistant coach. Nate's going to speak a little bit. But the boys had a phenomenal season. They actually won the MHSA Regional Championship, the first one in school history. Wow, wow that's awesome. So, Hi, I'm Nate Moriarty, and I'm here with part of our North boys Northville um, Alpine race ski team. And uh, our season has been the best one that we've had so far um, through the nine years of our program this year. We were conference champions, ca conference champions for the second time um, in a row. And then our first division and regional championship. Also, we qualified for States as a boys team for the first time ever. So that was really cool. And, uh, then we placed fifth in the state at the state championship. So uh, I think all of our boys were very uh, happy with our season because there was a big goal going into it. And uh, we'd like to thank all of our athletic department and coaches and boosters for all the support. Thank you. too that a team from down from metro detroit <laughs> plays so well right we're not there's not a lot of snow so yeah and, and this phenomenal. winter wasn't easy uh <laughs> yeah. we didn't get a lot of snow so but again they find ways to train and find different things and, and just did a phenomenal job yeah really so congratulations to ski and then lastly we have our figure skating team and sherry is here hello just want to say a couple words. This is two girls from our team. Only two of them could make it today. Um, but I just want to say that uh, our team was the only team in the whole state of Michigan that was able to take all three teams to states this year. Awesome. Our A and um, C teams were silver medalists, and our B team um, was a state champion. So that um, we just wanted to. Um, talk about that and how great it was and we um, competed at states and Southfield Civic Arena 
And we also had 15 skaters out of our 18 on the team that um, competed individually. So I have a question. I have a question for the, uh, for the, 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 the skate team and that. Is it still as subjective as when you see it on that? So, the Olympics. So, so, so the thing is, it's not, a, it's not like a, a sport where you compete against a clock. It's a clear where you really you know, fit. This is a sport that is just full of politics. It's full of all kinds of things going on, right? And it, I would say it's probably not the biggest sport around that it, than it used to be. But to see kids do that well and have a team here do that well is uh, makes me proud. I'm saying that personally because my wife was uh, a former um, – skater and she skated on Disney on ice. She turned pro and made a bunch of money at it for a while now, wow. but she, uh, you know, it's very difficult yeah. to sit there and do spins and, uh, you know, I don't think anybody does quads here, but, but, but do things and land on a tip and whatever is crazy. So, uh, Hats off to you girls. And then when you're practicing and you land on the ice, it's like landing on concrete, which <laughs> that takes a lot of guts as well. I'm going to ask, uh, and Brian, if you could stay there, but I'm going to ask every student, uh, athlete, if you could come up, if you're comfortable, and just stand behind the school board, and we'll take a couple pictures of that. And then, uh, Brian, I'd like you up there as well. I have one more thing. What do you want me to do? Don't forget that. Come on up. You can just kind of look back around here, and then, Karen, if you want to get her a picture, she traveled around the country. She lived in Japan for six months, skating for Disney Island. How old was she when she started skating? She went professional out of high school. She didn't go back to college. <laughs> oh, sorry. I'll get up. Is that one more thing? All right. If you guys can stay there, it'd mean a lot to me. And this is why. So, no, no, you please stay. So, so I've had the privilege of being a high school principal and serving in around the world, actually, and in districts. And and I I can say now, looking back you get to really know what real is. And uh, I can tell you unequivocally that the finest athletic director I've ever served beside is Brian Smolsky. I'm going to give you a couple examples as to why. What I have in my hand is a formal recognition of that, but there are things that you don't see that I do. And Brian's, it's, it's beyond work ethic. People will often say hours and laud people for that. But, you know, that's just part of the gig, right, as an AD. The, the piece that is the differentiator, in my opinion, when I'm at the high school, which I'm at often, Brian often has a coach or a student stopping by his office to talk to him. And it could be about anything. That they feel that comfortable and welcome. For some of the more difficult things, uh, if there needs to be an investigation or something looked into, Brian's professionalism and how he approaches that and handles that with discretion how he works with parents who can maybe sometimes be upset around issues of playing time and so on. In a community like ours, where we have a fifth largest high school in the state of Michigan, and let's say you're a basketball player, there's only five people out on the court at one time. And that is a really, really hard thing. So for the kids who compete and really put yourself out there knowing that iron sharpens iron, you're going up against some of your classmates that may be the best in the state, but you do it and you do it with love and care. But Brian is the glue of this. When I was at the high school today, you've got women's tennis against Salem. You've got 25 herb machines, rowing machines, outside kids training, 640 kids on the field. The, the meet is running perfectly. Of course, it's a beautiful day, but you're there, and you are really that glue. And you were also named as the um, Michigan Interscholastic Athletic Administrators Association Region 11 Athletic Director of the Year. Um, I've said this to you, but I can't say it enough. You are a gift to this community and a gift to this world. Our community public schools do far more than educate kids. They give them opportunities to, to pursue their passions. And to me, that's equally as important. When we have 700 kids out there, rather than being 
at home or, or whatever and not having uh, relationships with people and you see those relationships out there, that's that physical manifestation of what we do. And I'll also put a plug in for the fact of the value for your dollar in pay to play. Just uh, busing alone cost us $180,000 last year to transport our athletes to events. 180K. And I would argue it's completely worth it because it gives folks like you the chance and your parents and your families that joy. But thank you for the sacrifice you've also made. On, you, know, you kind of have to keep son, okay, your son's on first base because you can't be at his baseball game because you're at our baseball game. And I'm grateful for that as well. Um, that's an, another piece. So thank you, Brian. Thank you. I, I was going to try to sneak out before uh, that slide, but I'll just, just give you, I need oh, oh. you take your mask. Oh, you're right. Not cool. Thanks. But real quick, just about the, the winter athletes, tonight's really cool because you, I think you see the wide range of talent, right? You got the skiers and you go to a ski meet and they're flying down the made snow this winter. And then the figure skaters on ice on skates and then the swimmers and divers in the pool and then the wrestlers on the mat. And so just that wide range of ability and talent, I think, is super, super cool regarding winter sports. Uh, regarding this award, um, it's, it's truly just a reflection of you guys up here, Dr. Weber's team, all these student athletes, all the coaches, the parents, and the community. And, and I'm just grateful and humbled to be, to be part of that. But it's not... Son of Brian Samalski. I, I look at it more as a Northville public school. So um, congratulations to all of you and all our student athletes for what they do for us. Thank you, Brian. And before we head into the uh, ABCD awards, uh, I want to say as well, uh, over the weekend, our Robo Stings uh, robotics team punched their ticket to Worlds. Uh, in robotics, that is not a small thing at all. And my son and I had the privilege of going and watching him in Livonia. The vibe on the team was fantastic. The parental support, all of that was there. Uh, if you walk through the high school, um, Aaron, I know your daughter is in Mean Girls. She's not a mean girl. It's the name of a musical. Um, I think you're familiar <laughs> with that. Uh, but, I mean, you see, like, the, the uh, set crew just working their tails off to get everything built, ready to go. And uh, it's just a great feeling. And uh, the, the, this, I'll say it again, I do believe our community public schools are centers of community. In just the past two days at the high school, I mentioned those things, but you had track, tennis, baseball, mean girls going on, JV softball, soccer, you know, people rowing outside in the vibrancy. It just feels fantastic. And I think that's why those of us who get to serve your families and kids feel incredibly lucky because public education is awesome. So let's hit the ABCD awards. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. I get to kick us off. These ABCD awards are recognition of people that have been nominated by either family members, like member families of the students, um, students themselves, or uh, even colleagues uh, in recognition of how they go above and beyond the call of duty of their job. So I am starting today with Ms. Sandrek, and this, she was nominated by a parent who says that she's truly a gift to Northville Public School community. She loves each and every child so much, and she treats every child as if they were her own. All of my children have had Mrs. Sandrek, and she has been such a crucial part of our family's village. Not only is she nurturing, but she also creates a classroom environment where all kids can thrive. She is so deserving of this award, and she goes above and beyond every single day with every single student and family. We are so lucky to have had her play such an in instrumental role in our children's early childhood journeys. Thank you for all that you do. We are eternally grateful for you. So thank you, Ms. Sandtrack. Is she here? No. Oh, okay. Well. Thank you. Well, I have the great pleasure of recognizing Sandy Maynard and uh, her, the um, person who nominated her for the ABCD award is one of your parents 
who said the following, Mrs. Maynard creates a sense of belonging and safety for every child and parent. Her enthusiasm and encouragement empower children to explore, experience, and express themselves freely. In addition to her outstanding teaching skills, Mrs. Maynard is a great communicator, keeping parents updated and involved in their children's learning process. She possesses a unique ability to connect with each child, understanding their needs and learning styles. Her dedication to fostering not only the academic growth, but as we all know here, sitting here, their social and emotional development is also truly admirable. Ask her about a wrinkled heart case. So that's what she asked her when you see her. But Sandy, she goes on to say, you are an incredibly kind and compassionate person. You are lovely. You are fun. You are the best. And we all love you. So congratulations. Can I, can I step on the, the applause for a second? Because I've Jim and I have been here long enough to know that Miss Maynard stands out and will always be in my memory as I'm sure that there are some teachers who've been there in clutch moments where kids really needed them. There's probably some teachers who've saved a life in this district. But we know for positive Miss Maynard is one of them because we've had the um, pleasure of being here to hear about her saving a kiddo who I think was choking. And um, so this is literally a human being who has, we have a child here and probably, what are they probably now, a seventh grade or something. <laughs> but, um, but, you know, I mean, this is a, a teacher who has been amazing for many years. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I will be presenting the next one to Maxwell Granada, a kids club assistant. Um, he was nominated by a colleague who said Max is always engaged with children, helping staff and families, willing to sub on his, day, on his days off, and has a smile on his face. Is Max here tonight? No? Uh, no. Okay. All right. Well, congratulations. All right, I'm next for Mr. Turner. I don't think Mr. Turner is here, which is it's too bad. He's, he's pretty phenomenal. Yes. Um, the award for Mr. Turner was, uh, he was nominated by a student um, who says, Mr. Turner goes above and beyond the call of duty as his role of a history teacher at the high school as an admirable figure inside his classroom and out. Within his class, Mr. Turner keeps his students engaged, organized, and structured, creating memorable lessons in his own unique and often silly and witty manner. He also holds space for harder discussions in class, never shying away from the uncomfortable aspects of history that some may prefer to gloss over. There is something special for every student in Mr. Turner's classroom, from the history enthusiasts to the sports nerds and everything in between. He inspires me with his admirable ability to connect with such a diverse group of individuals, beloved by all. Mr. Turner is a figure of support and stability in the student's life. The student says, when I'm around him, I feel safe. I adore his openness, wisdom, and amiability, which showed me light when I felt stuck in a dark downward spiral due to a variety of factors, and he offered gentle words of wisdom and encouragement. His genuine optimism in life helped me find a new outlook on many subjects, existence included, which I think is just really phenomenal for a high school teacher. And I have the pleasure of knowing that Mr. Turner teaches IB history during the first hour of the day, which I cannot imagine how challenging that would be. And I think he, he does greet his students in, the, in this way and talks about the hard subjects. And so thank you, Mr. Turner, for everything you do. And definitely I'm proud to be able to congratulate you for your ABCD award tonight. Right. And I wish he was here.
All right, I get to finish us up here and I'm going to start with Kayla Linton. So Mrs. Linton and Ms. Linton is a third grade teacher at Winchester. She had two different parents lifting her up and asking that she be given this award. One of them indicated that she is a fantastic instructor. What they miss or appreciate, appreciate about her most is that she values and treats her students as individuals. They say she has created a wonderful learning environment and my kiddo is thriving in her classroom. You should see the beautiful mural she has outside her class. It says, quote, what I love most about our classroom is who I share it with. And it's surrounded by beautiful photographs of the different students. And this parent says, my daughter definitely feels loved and valued by Mrs. Linton. Her co-sponsor of this uh, suggested award uh, had a different um, uh, set of reasons. She says, my kiddo is having a fantastic year with Mrs. Linton. In addition to being a great instructor, she is loving and enthusiastic. My daughter is learning to love school again because of her. We appreciate that she recognizes the humanity in her students and treats them as individuals and values them as more than their academic achievements. She's a fantastic communicator and goes above and beyond to keep parents informed. What a great testament and we really, really appreciate you, Ms. Linton. And then I get to follow, uh, uh, finish us up. Um, with, it says Sean MacArthur on there. Is there a reason that it says that? So it should be Sarah. So Sarah is someone that I've actually gotten like on our screen here. I don't know why, why we have that, but Sarah is somebody who's definitely Sarah and I as Sarah would know, um, but also I've gotten to be in her classroom. Um, a colleague asked for her to receive this award and um, let us know that um, Mrs. MacArthur goes above and beyond every day. She's developed routines in her classroom to support all students. Her love for children and education is evident in her classroom. She attends professional development to learn how to best support her students and works together with her team to support them. She's an exemplary teacher. And I've actually seen this magic at work last March. I did a March's Reading Month and saw like the movement of, I don't know, 25 little tiny bodies in unison to go put away their supplies and come to the carpet and do, I mean, it's like amazing what, what she's got her class organized to do and how they're cohesive and how, um, you know, sort of like engaged and locked in they all were. Um, it was beautiful to see and really exciting to see. So I uh, couldn't agree more. And uh, thank you, Mrs. MacArthur. And a couple more things before we head into our presentation on our preschool program. Uh, so I was at Thornton Creek's um, PTA meeting today, and they gave Pay It Forward for Porter um, some new cards and bracelets that they created. And uh, unfortunately, we lost the young man. Um, I, I was before my time, so maybe two and a half years ago, three years ago. They have a beautiful garden there for him, um, but they also are keeping his memory alive. This is a do something kind and leave this card behind card. And then you kind of shoot the QR code and it tells you what to do and how to do it. Mm -hmm. So I'll get some extras of those and make sure the board receives those. And they also had some new uh, bracelets today. Again, you know, our community public schools honoring uh, those that make up our community, which are our kids and our families. Finally, uh, some interest uh, from board members around visiting uh, Hillside around lunchtime. We can do so uh, any day this week, but Thursday, and then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of next week, just uh, let Megan know. And then if there's time in my calendar as well, I'll be over there. And uh, also open invitation to anybody on my building visits to, to come with me, whatever building it is. So thank you. Sounds good. All right. Uh, let's move into our next item then, which is the early childhood and an extended day program presentation. <laughs> so I'll just start by thanking you for the opportunity to um, share some information about our program tonight. Um, the kids did make you a gift. So this year they created bracelets um, that are at your place. <laughs> There's a theme, right? Um, in each set, one bracelet was created by Kids Club students, and the Beat It bracelet was created by our preschoolers. 
our studio teachers did, um, of course, want to share the process with you. So they created a video, which is linked on the QR code on the tag. Um, you'll also see that the tag officially invites you to our annual children's exhibit. Again, it'll be held outside here at Old Village School this year. Um, we'll have the food trucks back, our children's performer. A couple new things this year include um, a, a collaborative weaving art installation and also um, some exhibit t-shirts that staff and kids will be wearing. So um, thanks for having us and I'll turn it over to Chelsea. I don't have any notes so I really need to talk. Got it? Okay. Okay. Hi, I'm Chelsea Simons. I'm the program coordinator for Early Childhood and Extended Day. It's good to see all of you. Um, today we're excited because we're going to talk about our brand. It's something that we've been working a lot on um, over the past several years. So um, I'm going to just jump right into it. Um, here's our agenda. We're going to talk about kind of our why. Why did we start um, working on our brand and what led us to that? Then we'll talk really about our brand work, what we've done, um, and kind of progress into our progression of what progress we've made, um, some program updates, and then we'll finish off with next steps, like where we're going with our brand. So thinking about a quote that represents, I mean, why we're, we're doing this, I felt like this really um, resonated with our, our progress and process so far. So branding is the art of differentiation. So we really want to, to tell the community why we stand out and why they should choose us and trust in us to care for their children and be that foundation um, for the rest of their school career. So um, we really wanted to talk about and highlight why we stand out and what's the best way to go about that. So when we started our journey, there were a lot of questions. And I think really we started to say, who are we? And that led to a lot of other questions. So what is our identity outside of Northville Public Schools? Um, what experiences are we providing to children and their families? And why do they choose us? Why do staff want to work here? That's a really important one. And what makes us high quality? We like to consider ourselves that, but really thinking about outlining that and, and what does make us that. Um, so we're faced with all of these questions and thinking about future program planning. Um, and this led us on our journey of identifying our brand. So this is really where we started with a lot of questions. The fun thing we started with was logo design. This, I think, was a fun place for us to kick off our, our brand and really started the term um, with our staff. We came into a meeting. It was like, okay, we're going to start talking about our brand. And it was easy to kind of start with our logo. So we've always used the Northville Public Schools logo on letterhead. Um, and then when we our website was created, the purple tree was developed. I think it was just, it's been a placeholder, honestly. We've not put it on swag or done much with it. So um, it's a great tree, but I think we really wanted to, to kick off our, our branding with how we want to define ourselves. So um, that started with um, hiring a marketing agency to come out and do some professional development with our staff. And we did some workshops, which was really fun. Um, one activity that we did was um, creating an animal. It could be made up, a real animal, um, that represents our program, not necessarily to be our logo, but what do we stand for? So that was a fun one. I'm, people came up with all kinds of fun um, animals, like a liger, lion, tiger mix. You know, it was just, it was a really fun um, activity. Like we're fierce, right? So then we talked about like the meaning behind why we chose those animals. Um, another activity we did was we searched um, photos that we felt like represented our program. That was really powerful to, to look at all of those and think about why we're choosing that. Obviously, a lot of them involve children, um, some really powerful pictures that we came up with. So that was a really fun experience for us to start this process because we really got to hear from everyone in the room, like, who are we? Um, and, and that part was really important for us to start off that way. So that was a great experience. Then we hired a graphic designer to create our logo. So that's when we got into the nitty gritty of everything and really started looking at um, our design. So we final our final design is on the on the far right there. So that is our logo now. Um, I want to talk about the meaning behind it a little bit. This was fun for us. So we took our experiences with staff, all of that information, and then shared it with a graphic designer and said, "This is what we feel how we want to be represented." Um, obviously, the N is the connection to Northville Public Schools. Um, you'll notice the 
there's brush strokes on those, um, the color blocks there. And that was really driven from our um, Reggio influence and our connection to the studio and how art just really plays a big role in our program. So that was kind of a tribute to that. Um, the shapes were representative of blocks and how you can manipulate, manip manipulate those into different ways, um, really being play-based and hands-on active learning in our program. That's such a big piece of what we do. And um, that was where the design came from, presented it to us. Of course, we had a bunch of tweaks back and forth because that's just how it, how it goes. And we're so happy with the results. That's really been our identity the past couple of years. Um, the fun part was putting it on swag. That's the last step. So it's so fun to see. We have stickers for all of you um, today too out in front of you. So that, that's been really fun to see it out and about in the community. We have kids wearing shirts. Um, that's just been really fun for us to see, really representing our, our brand and our, our program. So this is a, a very uh, modified version of kind of a brainstorming session we had um, surrounding our brand and taking what we've learned from our sessions with staff. And what you see in the light blue there, that was really some gaps or some changes we wanted to make. I'm not going to go through each of these, but just if we look at consistency in classrooms for a minute, that was a gap. Um, that was actually something when I first started talking with staff, um, you know, that was a, a frustration for them, you know, seeing some inconsistencies, great experiences in all classrooms, but really wanting some consistency, um, you know, hearing that from staff themselves. So that's when we um, started to move towards high scope curriculum, which we talked about at our last presentation with all of you um, and implementing that in our program. And obviously off of that, we had um, an assessment tool for children and then coaching and professional development for, for our staff with our um, early childhood specialist. Again, very modified version, but this is kind of where we um, started. This was kind of our plan for moving forward. I'm going to hand it off back off to Joanne. <laughs> okay, so um, during the pandemic, we started having conversations and discussions about making some shifts to the structure of our preschool um, classrooms. Returning from the pandemic provided the opportunity to implement some of those changes. So we started with transitioning our school day preschool to a model with, I'm sorry, transition our full day preschool to a school day model with before and after optional care. We lengthened the time of our half day classes, extended that to four hours. And through reimagining these schedules has allowed us to highlight really the high quality early childhood learning experiences and shifting away from a more focus on child care. The new model also provides daily collaboration, collaborative planning time for teaching teams, which is just super important element in, re, uh, re, uh, in then moving towards a research-based curriculum. So all of those things kind of fell into place. Um, the other changes, um, structure changes included um, move, a move to all multi-age classrooms and um, more closely aligning with the district calendar, with the K-12 calendar. Yeah. Hi, everybody. It's so good to see all of you again. I always look forward to coming every year to talk to you about curriculum. Um, but my name is Brandy Gingell, and I'm the early childhood specialist here. Four years ago, my role is created uh, to coach teachers and support them with um, develop, developmentally appropriate practice and professional learning. Um, since then, we also developed a process to implement curriculum. And what I'm really excited about is more opportunities for peer learning. So curriculum imp implementation is part of our program's identity, and it's really built this common language and consistency with our teachers, children, and families. Um, as you know, or you might remember, two years ago, we piloted five of our 14 classrooms to facilitate the high scope daily routine. Um, we had those teachers come and talk with you last year about that process. And then last summer, we took on four more classrooms. And now this summer, we have our last five classrooms that we'll attend. So that means this fall, all 14 of our classrooms will be implementing high scope. Mm -hmm. We're really excited about that. And we're excited that we took um, high scope always uses the, uses the term inch wide, mile deep. You know, so um, I know it's taken us a few years to get there, but by doing that, it's really allowed um, more time you know, for teachers to learn um, and then for them to use each other as support as well. 
Um, part of our brand is high quality education for children, and this means our teachers receive high quality professional learning. Teachers that are new to the curriculum, um, they're going to visit, so, so right now our teachers that are going into it, they're currently visiting classrooms that are fully established in high scopes. They can kind of get a feel of what that looks like. And then this summer, they're going to be attending a three-day training that's just filled with active learning. They're um, really going through the daily routine themselves and doing a lot of practice activities. Um, and then our first year teachers have become leaders and supports for, for those teachers with learning the curriculum. Um, high school classrooms are also visiting other high school classrooms. So established classrooms are visiting each other that they, they can learn from each other. And then we meet as a group together and we talk about what our strengths are, what our challenges are, um, and we dig deeper in curriculum concepts. One of those, you know, I like to be really transparent and I want teachers to be really transparent about how they feel too. So one of our activities in that, for example, is we have like an elephant on the screen and we talk about like, what's the elephant in the room? What are you really the most worried about? We'll make a big list of some things they might be worried about and we visit that list, you know, each time we meet too to see if we can check any of those things off or see how we can support each other through that. You know, change is hard and it's scary. Um, and then over the last, um, over the last two years, I've taken small groups at a time of these teachers on a field trip, we all load up in my car and we drive to Gretchen's house in Ann Arbor, which is another early childhood early childhood program that fully implements the curriculum. They welcome us into their classroom and we get to observe as a group. Um, we get to ask that teacher questions. She's available for us. And then after that, we meet um, with the director and then we kind of discuss what we saw and teachers have an opportunity to ask questions again for that too. Each year, we've been able to send 10 teachers to ascend, attend the High Scope Conference. That's them in the, the bottom picture there. And they get to choose active learning sessions that focus on developmentally appropriate practice with their goals in mind. It's also just really fun. You know, we get to eat lunch together. Um, you know, we have sessions together. There's a keynote speaker. Uh, it's just a really fun experience for, for something for us to do together. And all of our classrooms have now been trained to utilize High Scope's assessment tool, which is Core Advantage. Teachers use this data as a tool to plan and scaffold children's learning. It's also shared with families during conferences, and it serves as a tool to talk about where their children are and to make goals and to prepare for kindergarten readiness. So this has all created a common language with our teachers, children, and families. Um, it's been really nice this year, especially. I've been really just observing teachers. They'll, they'll go to, into each other's classrooms when children aren't there, you know, before or after school. They'll share small group times that they've done that worked well or ask teachers what's going well for them. Um, and even with CORE, we have a teacher. Uh, she just loves CORE. She's really got it down. And in the hallway, sometimes she'll notice another child, you know, did something that fits the assessment, and she'll share that with that teacher of a child that's not even in her classroom. Uh, and it also helps parents with their children, too. You know, instead of asking those questions like, how was school today? Or what did you do for school today? Especially at a preschool level, they'll say, like, nothing or it was good, you know. But instead now teacher, or, uh, parents can ask their children things like, what did you do for a large group time today? Or what was on the message board today? So it really helps build more language, um, you know, opportunities with children with their families. Uh, and then the common language is also with children in the classroom, too. You know, we have these very distinct parts of the day. Even though teachers can be individual, you can set your routine up in any order that you would like, but the parts of the day are the same. You know, high, um, large group time, small group time, planning time. Um, so children use that language in the classroom, too, and it feels very comfortable and familiar for them when we talk about what's coming next. Okay, I'm just going to move to NTSS. So I'm just going to give you some updates on MTSS as well. Um, so F MTSS has continued to grow within our program as well. All classrooms are using second step. You can see that on the bottom there, um, the little boy has the second step puppet on. Um, second step is a social emotion emotional learning curriculum that teachers are using each day in their classroom. Jen Kasaba, our school psychologist, she facilitates whole group and one-on-one -on -one support to children. Last year, she also started focusing on groups, um, smaller groups that she pulls out of the classroom that focus on social-emotional skill building, such as following directions, turn-taking, 
appropriate social language, identifying feelings, self-regulation, and entering play. She meets with small groups of children on a weekly basis, and then she uses intentional play, role-playing, and games to practice these skills with children. John also plays a big role in supporting children transition to kindergarten by connecting elementary kindergarten teams to the information provided by preschool teachers. Um, John is really like our bridge from preschool to um, to kindergarten or to you know to the district. For example, if a child receives any tiered support, this, uh, the services continue as they go to kindergarten. Um, and Jen's that bridge, and she collaborates with teachers and the social workers to communicate the needs of children as they enter kindergarten. Thank you. I am a member of the Family Involvement Committee, which means that I attend the Parent Advisory Group, which is shown above. Both meetings take place monthly, and we came up some with some goals prior to our first Parent Advisory Group meeting. We wanted to increase our family involvement for the program, we wanted to plan at least one or two family events, and as well as family appreciate or teacher appreciation. Um, and then we wanted parents to help provide some input for our program. The top photo is from our fleece and thank you event, where we had family volunteers come into our classrooms and help us tie fleece blankets that would then go to the children at Mott Children's Hospital. And then the bottom photo is from our most recent event, the Family Literacy Night, which had a kindness theme. And this room was called Be Kind to Animals. And so in that room, they were making toys for the Humane Society. And another room that we had, which was really fun, was the Mass Reader, which they read kindness stories and our teachers were had masks on. And then at the very end, the kids were like, I'll just show you a video. <laughs> Oh, oh my goodness. Goodness. that is so cute. So they're like, take it off. They were chanting, like, it's take like the it Mountain off, Singer. take it off. Yeah, it's just like that show, yeah, or song, whatever. Is that Skippy John Jones? Who is that? I don't know. Oh, 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 it's yeah. like a Siamese cat. It's actually kind of scary, but the kids just didn't have one. Who do you think it is? The dog, yeah. Any guesses? I don't know. Do you think this is Brandy and the other man is Brandy? Maybe, 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 maybe
so we started with those posts and had some fun pictures of kids on both um, Instagram and Facebook. We also share those accounts with families, um, obviously, and encourage them to go and, and like our posts. And they've been great um, and a big supporter. So like, like Rebecca said, if you could go give us a follow, that would be great um, to kind of check out what we're doing in our program. Oops, I'll go back on. So really thinking about what's next um, for us in regards to our brand, um, we want to continue to update our website and build social media presence. So we're not finished with our website. It's still a work in progress, um, but we really want to, to focus on that. And then same thing with social media, um, making sure that parents know where to find us, that we exist. We've heard that in the past. Um, we've really not had to market, quite honestly. People come to the district and then find us, um, you know, by word of mouth, where they, they have neighbors that have been um, through the program. But we also have people say, I wish I would have known about, you know, your program um, that are already in the district, like when my kids were younger. So um, we really want to make sure that people can find us and they, they know where and we're highlighting what we do. So they choose us. Um, Brandy talked a lot about um, high school classrooms. So we would love for teachers to become high scope model classrooms. So Brandy is a high scope field consultant. So that means that she can certify classrooms as being um, high scope certified. And the process is to um, complete a preschool quality assessment or a PQA that's through high scope. And if they score a certain score on that um, assessment tool, then they are certified as a high scope teacher. And that's a really big accomplishment. We have teachers that are already there. And quite honestly, it takes five years to fully implement the curriculum. And we have teachers that may get certified this year. So it's um, really amazing, all of the hard work that they've put in. So that's exciting. So maybe this year, but definitely we hope to celebrate those teachers next year with all of you at our meeting. So looking forward to that. The next is sharing child outcomes using core data. So we've really been working hard on um, reliability with our notes. That is a process. I hope to share more with you, um, too, when we have the opportunity. But it takes a lot to write a reliable core note, you know, being objective, making sure the scoring is accurate. Um, so we've done a lot of training around that. Because the data we're sharing, we want to make sure it's accurate and valid. Um, so we hope to provide the opportunity to share child outcomes with families and then all of you in the community, too. So that's hopefully something we can do in the future. We want to strengthen connections within the community. We've done this. Um, we feel like we've, we've had a lot of great additional opportunities this school year. Um, we, we connect with the community center and um, we had a weaving opportunity with seniors where they did an art experience. We've done a lot of really fun things over there, um, connections with the library, but we just want to keep extending. In the summer, it's so fun. We're like embedded in the community. We go to Tunes on Tuesday. We go to businesses. We went to Rebecca's for ice cream. Um, that was a really picture worthy moment with preschoolers with <laughs> Superman everywhere um, on their faces, but um, really just looking for more opportunities to, to be out in the community. So, I mean, it's so great. Everyone is always, yes, please. We want, who doesn't love to spend time with preschoolers, right? I mean, um, and anytime anyone wants to come and, you know, spend time with the preschoolers, they love it. Um, may ask you some strange questions, but <laughs> um, the next is exploring a literacy program to complement our curriculum. So this is something we've been talking about. Really want to find something that's a really good fit with what we're already doing and to not overwhelm our teachers, but really thinking about, I mean, obviously literacy, literacy is so important um, in education, but especially in early childhood. So just looking at some opportunities to do that. Um, we also want to look through some alternative options for quality recognition. So we do... Um, we're accredited through NACI, but just looking at other options out there um, in early childhood. So great start to quality um, is another system we're potentially looking into, but um, we just really want to explore all avenues for that. And then the last thing really is to finalize our mission and vision statements um, in regards to our brand. That, that piece we saved for last because this process has been um, really telling, I think, of, of what staff and how families feel about us. And we've really learned a lot over the past three years um, regarding our brand. So that part, we didn't feel ready to do at the beginning. We felt like we wanted to save that. And I'm really glad we did because I feel like now we're at a point where we can really put into words what our program does. So excited to, to start working on that too. <laughs> wow, very nice. And then, more? Well, we have one, one more slide. slide. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Just a few quick updates. So, excuse me, Chelsea did mention that we're in our accreditation cycle again. Sorry, no, I'm choking. Um, it is a five-year cycle, so we just submitted our fourth annual report for our Ridgewood classrooms, which then 
we had to include in that our, our intent to renew our accreditation. Well, thank you. That was very kind. Um, so once that's submitted, we're basically need to be prepared for the site visit at any time. So we did find out just recently our window um, is September, December of this year for our Ridgewood classrooms for our accreditation. At the end of this month, we'll submit our third annual report for Old Village School and Thornton Creek, our classrooms there, because they're on a little bit different cycle. Um, those site visits could happen at the end of next school year or the following year. So we're ramping up for that process. Um, this is also the week of the young child, so we encourage you to spend some time this week celebrating young children in our schools and our community. I'm excited to share that we did just wrap up our enrollment window for both our summer programs and the next school year. Families enrolled through our link, a link it's all online now, in our child management system called Elio. Um, our summer enrollment looks great, happy to share. Preschool summer camp is full with currently enrolled families. Be here at Old Village. Um, we have some fun activities planned for the kids, some returns of some favorites, including Nelson. Um, we have a petting farm come, a foam party, lots of fun stuff. <laughs> Try a few new things this summer, too. <laughs> um, summer Kids Club enrollment is trending up. We did, we were able to add a classroom, so we're back to eight, or we have eight classrooms. To give it some perspective, before the pandemic, we had nine Summer Kids Club classrooms, and we're slowly trending back in that direction. Another busy calendar, including touring the big house in Ann Arbor, so hopefully the kids will like that. Um, as far as next school year, both parent, child, and half-day classes are full at this point for the following school year. Um, school day preschool enrollment is healthy. We currently have some openings at Ridgewood, but otherwise classrooms are pretty full. And kids club enrollment continues to trend up. Nothing drastic, but just head in that direction. Um, and then we're super excited. It sounds like you got a little preview, but we are fortunate to make some improvements to the playground here at Old Village in that um, by adding elements to that open portion by Main Street, so just adding, not taking anything away, um, that Ridgewood will, on the kindergarten preschool playground will address the sand area, which is probably the biggest need out there, um, remove that and put in some turf and a little play element for the kids. Um, so that does conclude our presentation, so we're certainly open to any questions that you have. Well, I know that uh, Mr. Boffman has a few things he'd like to say, and I'm sure there'll be some questions, but really well done. I appreciate it, Dr. Weber. Yeah. Um, one of the facets of my job is to oversee this program, but it's probably the place where I do the least amount of work because, frankly, they don't need me. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I work with them on a regular basis with having check-ins, but ultimately they are so self-sufficient. Uh, but I remember when I, just after I got here seven years ago, we had the unfortunate news that Eileen, our former director, was retiring and we were looking for a new director. And I remember the interviews very well, and I remember sitting through them, and I remember our conversations about Chelsea Simons and was this the right person? And honestly, we took the chance because we just knew there was something there. And I remember my first conversation with Chelsea when she got hired on, and I was talking with her about the program and kind of her thoughts. She was coming from a different style of program. And she said to me, I want to do this, and I want to do this, and I want to do this, and I want to do this. And I was like, well, I don't think anyone can do all of those things. <laughs> As she walked out of the office, I thought, oh, that poor girl just thinks she's going to do the whole world on. And in those years, she has updated the curriculum to high school, created a parent advisory committee, updated and provided real assessments, uh, brought in a coach, which I really thought was never going to be affordable and possible in their budget uh, for the teachers. It has gone after certification, updated the models to make them more um, student learning centered and, and get away from the child care aspect specifically. Um, and then MTSS, I mean, what they've yeah, done really. with, with a team there, uh, we, we offered them some support with a grant we had. What I don't think people get is the transition of some 200 kids every year who leave our preschool program and go into our kindergarten classrooms. And what Jen Cassaba and Brandy and others do in that MTSS team is really make ready our kids for the kindergarten and now the young five experience for some of our kids. Uh, I, and all this while managing a tuition-based program, tuition for parents and the balance against costing too much and driving parents away and Oh, by the way, staff shortages and the difficulty in recruiting that Joanne <laughs> spends the better part of her life doing. Uh, and all while, honestly, I meet with Chelsea monthly at least. And I just say, like, what can I do to stay out of your way and let you guys keep doing great things? I'm just so 
happy to see that I don't know that anything in that first conversation with me and Chelsea has not come to fruition. And frankly, the only one which you heard tonight was them potentially looking for even better ways to hold themselves to a higher standard, mm -hmm. which, I mean, Macy's already a pretty high quality seal, but to be looking for other ways to make sure to create a premier program for parents is really phenomenal. I'm just so happy with the results and Honestly, this makes this the easiest part of my job um, because, frankly, sometimes I forget that is my job because we do <laughs> take care of all of that. So thank you all for the work your team does. It, it really is phenomenal. So thank, thank you. you. Hey. Thank you. I just want to say one thing, too. Honestly, I, I feel so supported in my role by all the central office team and Dr. Weber. I don't. I take risks because I'm not, I'm not afraid to take them um, because I don't worry about it not working out because I know I'll be supported. So, and honestly, all of you on the board too, like we come and present and I just feel like you're just so like welcoming to ideas and, and new initiatives that we have. So honestly, and on, truly without teachers, when I came here, it was like, we could only do it unless we had the staff that could, that could do this and that we're willing to make change. And like Brandy said, change is scary. And we've done a lot of that. Um, but really their, their motivation and their drive to be the best and, and do what's best for kids is why we are able to do everything that you saw us um, do. Cause they're the ones doing it in the classroom. So um, really it's been pretty amazing. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Incredible presentation. How sure about was. comments from the board? Yeah. I just make a couple of comments because I, I feel like I mean I'm an alumni of uh, of, uh, of, of 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 this years and years and years ago right um, from from K through Club Mid and, and Summer Kids Club and all of that at the time and at the time I used to think wow it's really a great program it's affordable but they're tying it's not just daycare right it's education tied in but to see where you've taken it from then to where you're taking it now that's what impresses me I mean. We, we all know it, right? We come from a very demanding, high expectation community, right? I mean, I don't know that there's a whole lot of communities that have higher expectations than we do out here. Um, and you've taken something and you've been able to, to prove that learning and fun are not mutually exclusive. They can be tied together. And the thing that I, I think that I heard from this presentation that tops it off is we talk, you know, we, we have our five-year mission and goals and plans and we always talk about you know best practices and that and and you've just done that right you, you've tied you've tied your plans to the same kind of mission and goals you've tied it to educational best practices you've tied it to consistency of process and when you when you build that consistency of process now it's repeatable now what you're doing is you're handing off kind of all stars at at uh you know, at three years old, four years old, five years old, and you're making actually our teachers in kindergarten and first grade, it's easier for them, and you're allowing that individual growth to occur. So, I mean, it's just phenomenal. I used to love the program years ago when I was part of it, but to see where you've taken it today is really impressive, and I just want to applaud you for that, right? That the, the process consistency and the best practices, I mean, just takes this off the top it is a thing that I think almost makes the branding not all that important because you guys are so good. People just see it instantaneously. And I, and I love the logo and all that kind of stuff, but it, it's taken us to the next level. And, uh, you know, I, I couldn't be more proud of, uh, like I said, I feel like an alumni, right? I, I always focus on my college alumni, but I'm an alumni of this, this program. And that's really awesome. Well, many of us on, on this sitting at this table have had our children in this program. So we all, this is a, an alumni group right here, I would say. I would join you, Jim, in, the, in making in the comments that you made. Um, I think it's, um, I w you know, I wish my now second grader could go back, circle back and redo her time because really there's so many unique and really important work that you're doing with kids uh, to um, that, you know, it's, it's so admirable. The kind of words that I, I grabbed, though, I tried, there's so much in your presentation, and, and uh, Aaron, you know, you really touched on all of the essential components of, you know, quality operating in an early childhood center. But the words that I grabbed were collaboration, 
the transparency that you're creating. This is all the, the kind of environment that you're creating that enables success not only for your students but for your your staff and you know and and the parents that you know support their families and kids. Cohesion. I, I guess what was going through my mind is this is this is a team that has made a dramatic shift has really redefined the world of what's going on in early child um, education in our district and what it must have taken. I had great appreciation, so I'm grabbing these words, the focus on developing new skills, a new language, the way we talk to one another, emotions in, related to change and acknowledging those and putting those out so their mutual support and responses can create safe space for change. It's hard to get change to go if people don't feel safe. How to take calculated risks in a supportive environment. Can't have, people won't feel able to do that unless you create that environment. The professional development, the ongoing professional growth development in, in your in your staff um, is it just is an, a testimony, I think, to the motivation and, and the the energy that has been created in the in the desire, the shared goal for what we're going for here, and that we can get there, and we're going to help. And if I see something good going on in the hallway I, with your child, I'm going to mention it to you because, darn it, isn't it cool? You know, that's a success for you, and I want you to know that. So uh, I. I think those were just some of the things that were swirling through your really wonderful presentation, but kudos to you, and it's um, a, a great asset to our district that you energize these kids into, our, into the next stages, ready to continue learning. Authentic assessment, you know, this, the kind of things that we are going to continue holding those kids' uh, hands as they develop in this, you know, it's, it's all connecting, and what a wonderful thing that you, you're doing it in, in your center. So thank you. Mm -hmm. I think the only way your presentations could be better is if you brought little preschoolers <laughs> in, you know? Like, bring the classroom into us here, because we would love Have to see that. Yeah. I know, exactly. <laughs> Maybe we could bump it down to five, five or so. Um, but I do love your presentations. They're, it's so amazing. And, you know, yes, my daughter was also in your program. Um, and I thought it was wonderful then. And I think, yeah, if I could get her, of course, she's a cranky 13 year old now. So I don't know that she would go along with it. But if we could get her to go back, maybe some of that crankiness would go away. Um, yeah. <laughs> a little older. A little older? Okay. All right. We'll keep that in mind. Um, but I do, I love the um, idea of um, the MTSS support and working with um, the kindergarten teachers and getting that bridge, that transition even stronger, I think, is so important. So great work. Well, I, I my children were not alum. I, we moved here. My kids were too old. But my niece is currently a student here. And before my sister even moved here, she had my mom and I come check the school out uh, for my nephew, who's now in first grade. And I, I, it was exciting for me to come in and be able to see the building and everything. And so my sister signed up and now my niece still goes here, so it's it's been wonderful for our family. It's a great experience, and my niece loves school. Um, I just was wondering, you know, I loved how the presentation was about branding because in your day-to-day -day life, I think about branding as a way of getting people to buy things, which I'm not saying it's not, but you brought so much more into the idea of branding, and so I, I loved how you made it like a a way of focusing a lot of things and are we being true to our brand? Are we being true to ourselves? So what I was wondering about was how do you, how would you determine, how would you feel like, what are you looking for to know that this branding has been successful? What are you, what is your goal around the brand for the future? Yeah, I think to know if it's working, um, you know, the culture shift is, is interesting. I think what I, what I really want, I think is, is teachers to feel supported and like when we have a new teacher I think this is where we're going really it's like when a new teacher comes in to start with us um, that they feel fully prepared when they go into the classroom because quite honestly that's not the case um, 
and, and building our brand is like bringing someone in. It's like, okay, this is this is when you walk in. This is just what we're doing everywhere. So when you walk into a classroom, same thing for family experiences. When we have open house, they walk in a classroom. Yes, teacher personalities are different, right? But that they they can expect that when they go into the classroom, this is the experience that they'll get. And I think um, that will just come from people's experiences, really. Like when someone talks about our program, what are they saying? Um, when they talk about their child experience, you know, that you've, you've all experienced that, like what do they say about it? And hopefully some of those common words come up, right? Um, that they're, they're cared for, they're supported, that we have high quality curriculum, you know, all of those things, like some of those words and experiences, I think that's how we'll know um, that, that it's working, I guess. The other pieces, like we talked about, is like people being able to find us easily. Um, this year when we redid our website, started using social media, we actually had less calls to the office, our office team reported that. Um, which was that was a really great start, I think, for, for branding because when if parents can find the information out there and we're clear and concise on our messaging, um, that's another really big piece too. We don't want you to say all of these words if we just need to say click here to enroll, right? Like we're trying to condense things and make things user friendly because parents are busy, they have a lot going on, so we just want to to showcase what we do in a condensed, modified way. So I think. Just for people's experience, I guess I'd say. I, I love that. I mean, I think it would be, the world would be a much nicer place if we all thought about branding in this way. You know, this very, like, holistic, which we talk about the whole child a lot, this very holistic view of what you're meaning to do when you, you know, develop the new brand. I don't really like to use the word rebrand, but, you know, you, you we did all this work in, that, in every aspect of it. So that that's wonderful. And I would say, to Ms. Stewart's point about the MTSS system, I mean, that is a, such a huge reason as a parent to send your child here because as a parent, you know, you're thinking about wanting to make sure your kid is prepared for K-12, but you've got that added connection. You've got that added piece of being part of the school system. So I think that's so key. It's wonderful. So I had also one more question just about like how you were talking about, you know, observing each other and spending time in each other's classrooms and this, when, <laughs> like, uh, like, uh, like, how do you do? You, do you do you have people come in and so that other people can go? I, I, sincerely, how do you make it happen during the day? <laughs> she is like a couple piece, and we usually sit down together each month and look at our calendar and we'll see like if we have call offs on a day people already took their PTO, and then we just place people. So they usually go typically they'll visit a classroom for an hour and a half. We really want them to see like a, a big chunk of the daily routine and then they just come back into their classroom so you know we try to send out you know maybe two teachers a, a week okay so, so yes we're able to send them out sometimes i mean of course we have to be with children first so sometimes if we have people call in we might have to switch switch them around a little bit but we really try not to do that we really try to be consistent um i usually send out like a reflection form like a couple days before so teachers can read that First, so they know what to look for, or what they um, want to reflect on, and then when they get back, they they fill that out. Uh, but yeah, we're just really creative, and it's like a giant puzzle. <laughs> yeah. uh, we figure it out. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. That's great. Thank you. I, I just was curious when you were listening. Good question. <laughs> Time is finite, so. <laughs> Good. Um, I just am going to tick off a couple quick things. Um, your your presentation just exudes competence. Like I just felt a sense of like. This program is going well. One thing Aaron didn't mention in the things that you've been able to accomplish, I mean, this program really was turned upside down by COVID, really turned inside out. So, I mean, that's all been what you've accomplished. You've accomplished with that, you know, huge hurdle. Um, but the competence was really there. I really want to, I really appreciated that one of your early questions was why staff want to work here. I'm sure that's really driven by, you know, turnover and market and, and those kinds of things, but I encourage you to keep going toward that um, because our staff are so important and you're putting a lot into them with all the training. So I think that's a really important focus. Um, I also just want to, I really appreciated the discussion of the elephant in the room and I want to keep encouraging you to kind of go there in these presentations. Sometimes I think like, are we only going to hear the good things and, and whatnot, but I think the board always appreciates like, we are addressing issues. We are looking at them. We're not going, we're not turning away from them. You heard that in the dialogue between Mr. Mazurik and Dr. Weber, right? Like in, in some of the early comments in the meeting, like going toward issues and being open about them is, it's super okay. And if you, if there wasn't some of that, I would worry that we weren't, 
necessarily, you know, um, like we would not see it. Because I know that the world is, is, I mean, with so much change, you're going to encounter issues. And that's okay. And I appreciate also your willingness to take risks. Um, I'm going to take a step out of what you're doing with kids and just say in terms of board communication and board relationship, I really appreciate the last few years of, of sort of like a thread of meaning that, that goes through your presentations with the high scope. So like, you're right, like we can put it together over years, like what you have brought here and showed us a little bit more micro, a little bit more in the weeds and then pulling it back out to mission. Like there's been a thread. And so I just think that's really a positive, it just, it's, it makes it more, understandable to us as a board what is going on and to see that like thematically evolve and develop is a really smart way to present yourselves and I think that's uh, you know incredibly well planned um, and well executed and then the last thing just um, your point about being embedded in the community in the summers um, like we represent people who don't have kids in this community. Like, right, we represent like all of North, oh, like there are people who never had kids, people who are, whose kids are out of school, people, right? And I just think that that linking in to the organic fabric of Northville is something that um, is an undefinable, um, but it is important to our whole community and really lovely and beautiful to see. So like I happen to have a window where I can sit up and like look down main street at what people are doing all day, or maybe I'm on the phone and I'm like nosily looking out and seeing these little kids walking with their little hands down the street, down main street all summer long. Um, it's like, you know, there's a quality of community organic well-being that um you know when miss stewart talks about bringing them here and sitting them on her lap like i don't think that that's like it, it, it's not on any list of things to do it's not on anything we can measure but um i just i really appreciate that about your program i think the parent as a parent in the program i always appreciated that the kids would get out and and do those things so i think from the kids to the people who are 99 and over, like that is a really lovely aspect of the program. And I really, um, I just want to lift that up too as, as part of, you know, the larger community project that we're all engaged in here too. So, mm -hmm. yeah. good, good point, good point. Oh, yeah, the, the only thing I would add, um, based on all these great things <laughs> that everyone has already said, is that I really am excited to see the parent advisory board that um, coming from a PTA lens, right, when you when your kids are in preschool, it's like, how do you get grounded, right? So I love that you're inviting parents to be a part of that, that you have some events planned, um, and it sounds like they were pretty well attended. So what a great way to, your point, like wrap people in, right, that sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it can be kind of isolating when you have really little kids and you're like, yay, they're finally in preschool, and now what? right but it's also a great way to get really connected so it's a great way to just blend everybody into Northville and I wonder if there's something that um, the Northville Public School social media could do in terms of like linking and sharing and liking posts back and forth and maybe that's kind of a growth edge for us that I think you're, you've done such great work on the brand and it's playful and it you know it's it's just so valuable in terms of that asset and how do we continue to grow grow that for you and with you um and also I, I heard a little bit of concern about like how kinder stangs might have affected enrollment and it sounds like at this point it's it's going okay so we have that thought too right that as a board as we're making that decision we're like okay we don't want to do anything that rocks that boat because it's such a valuable program um i'm also so happy to hear that everything is aligning with the nps calendar that i think over the years there have been some some pain points for families they're like okay but i you know i'm ready for my kid to start preschool but they have a few more weeks or you know all of that time so I think that's yeah I, I'm I'm this is awesome great work thank, thank you. you how about that feel <laughs> <Amazing. That was laughs> okay. well take it in you earned it <clears throat> and I know uh, very shortly you'll be at the doors here welcoming uh, the youngsters in so we don't want to keep you any longer <laughs> and thank you so much for just for me selfishly the joy of coming into place I get to serve this community and 
you know, walking past the kids that you're lining up and getting going and how happy their parents and grandparents are and how there's young, uh, one young lady today, man, she entered, you can just tell the kid's personality, the way she took those stairs, she had like two big bags, she had a side ponytail yeah. and she climbed it at like, like Mount Everest, like she's just going and right there you can sense she's, she's got some moxie. So thank you all sincerely and I hope you took in what was said. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. All right. This is our. Thank you so much again. Uh, this is our first opportunity for public comment, and I have two cards up here. When you step up to the podium, please identify yourself and state whether or not you're a resident within Northville Schools and what your relationship is to Northville Schools. Um, each speaker will have three minutes. And just for awareness, the nature of public comment during our board meetings is to allow a point of view to be stated goal of information, not to debate uh, with the board. We definitely really appreciate your comments. And the first card I have is for Jessica and Bob Guinea. Hello. Hello. Hi. My name's Bob Guinea. Nice to meet you. This is my wife, Jessica. Um, uh, I, we are Northville residents, and we have a five-year-old and a soon-to-be three-year-old who will be a part of the program here. Uh, so we're very excited for all the accolades and everything that we've seen today. Um, real quickly, I grew up in Michigan, uh, moved away for quite some time, and then moved back to Michigan and brought my wife from California, who specifically chose Northville. Um, I was open to moving back down river, quite frankly, which is where I grew up, and she wouldn't have anything to do with it, um, primarily because of the schools and the community that we have fallen in love with since we've been here since 2019. So um, our reason for being here today is a simple one. Um, our our five-year-old is soon to be a kindergartner, and we are in one of the new neighborhoods that was recently developed uh, off of Seven Mile and Napier, in between Napier and Ridge there on the back end of Steeplechase called Montcaret. And we realized that it is booming in Northville, right? There's a new community that's sprouting up on Eight Mile pretty much every day. Um, but one of the things that we're having a challenge with is where our son is going to go to school. Um, and we have the map here. I watch a lot of Law and Order, so I will call this Exhibit A. <laughs> um, where, and we blew it up a little, so it's easier to see. But uh, the map um, shows our community and shows our street, actually, but actually only shows... Uh, a little nub of our street and doesn't continue the street on. It's called Hunter's Trail. Um, the brown area represents the school, that, the, the children that will go to Moraine and the, the pink uh, that will go to Ridge. And um, so the challenge we're having is we have a school bus that stops right in front of our house every day that our five-year-old has just fallen in love with the idea of getting on that bus and going somewhere. We were under the impression we were going to Moraine. Um, all the friends that he's made uh, in our community are also going to Moraine. But when we called in, we were told that the first two houses on Hunter's Trail, of which we're the third, uh, will go to Moraine. Moraine. And then, as of right now, the rest will go to Ridge. And so we're just trying to ask the board, um, frankly, to, to help us complete this map. Um, if we can um, possibly put some energy into it just so we can have some consistency. I think the biggest thing for our son is, he, I don't know where he gets this, but he has a crazy uh, big personality <laughs> and loves making friends. And we wanted to have this consistency and he's just in love with school. He loves, you know, it, I mean, everything is just uh, absolute love fest with him for the friends he's making and they're all going to Moraine. And so we don't want to necessarily tell him he's going to Ridge yet. Both excellent schools, of course. We're not worried about that part of it. Um, but we're just trying to figure out exactly where the zoning would take him. And like I said, we've been getting conflicting messages. So we're hopeful that the board can help us possibly in finishing the zoning map. Yeah, we understand that. Um, so in the map, we're clearly in the brown. But like my husband said, our neighborhood just isn't com completely reflected or finished on the map. But our house has been constructed for five years. We've lived there for five years. That's a very kind timer. Uh, anyway, so yeah, we're just asking for help to complete the map because we don't want him to start somewhere and then it turns out we have yeah. to fill out in district forms and then where does our younger son go and the possibility of them getting separated. I don't know how that works, but we specifically are, I understand that neighborhoods sometimes get split up, but it doesn't quite make sense for us to have our street split up. Mm -hmm. Having We were told specifically two houses on our street go to one school and then we're, it's our hope that once the our, the rest of our street is completed on the map that we will go to the same schools the rest of our block if not yeah. our neighborhood um 
And we, and we realize it's a really finite issue too. We understand it's like really, it's really important to us, but right now it's probably a lot bigger picture that right. you're dealing with, with multiple zones. And we are, I mean, we are on the border, but it's clear that we are shown at, in the brown on okay. to be moraine. So, so we're, yeah. And to yeah. give your husband his moment of law and order, could you please uh, submit exhibit A? <laughs> thank you, yes. Uh, New York, Bailey. Yes, thank you. I always wanted to say that. Thank you. And that's exhibit B there as well. <laughs> Super helpful. Thank you. Thank you for your time. We appreciate thank you. it. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah. And we'll make sure Mike gets your phone number and, and email address to it. Excellent. Thank, thank you. Okay. Thank you for being here. Yeah, thank you. Just want to say one thing. Yeah. Um, so the city of Novi actually helps us with our maps. Uh, they have a geospatial department that uh, we've used uh, to uh, create these. And so we know that you know from this the last time that a map was created. I mean, there's been more development. So absolutely, we need to get these updated. And we'll, we'll do some oh no, we exchanged emails. I didn't hear name tag there. Sorry. Oh. No. <laughs> Yeah, you've been very helpful. Thank you. All right, thank you. Okay, okay. Uh, next we have Jill Anton. Hello, I have children at Meads Mill Middle School and NHS. I came here tonight to express my disappointment in Meads Mill and MPS administration for not coordinating viewing of the near total eclipse yesterday at all of our schools. Sorry, I get nervous talking. <laughs> Every school in our district allowed students to witness the eclipse during school except Meads Mill. Why was there no coordinated effort in incorporating this amazing natural occurrence into each school's science lessons along with viewing the actual event outside? On top of this, the Meads Mill track coach purposely did not allow track students to go outside until near totality was over, even though the rest of the school was released at 3.02 p.m. Did anyone in district administration notice that Meads Mill was the only school that did not participate when they published social media posts yesterday? I'm disgusted with Meads Mill administration and the district for how this was handled. While you made sure you got a picture of our superintendent with preschoolers looking at the eclipse, Meads Mill middle school students were denied access. In addition, I sincerely hope you bring in a non-Meads Mill employee when you hire a new principal next year. It would also be beneficial for you to have honest peer reviews amongst the two middle schools and even to have our middle school administrators see how things are run at our elementary schools. I think Mrs. Lindsay would have good suggestions for improvements at Meads Mill based on how I saw her run her school. Meads Mill needs help and I think you should spend some more time there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think you sent an email too because I, I saw it come in our, our email as well. Yeah, thank you. Okay, any more? Any, I have no more blue cards. Okay. All right, next we have a new hire. Okay, I bring forth uh, motion 91 that the board award a one-year prorated NEA teacher contract to Lauren Wooster for the 2023-24 school year as presented. Support. Okay, I have a motion properly presented by Ms. Meyer and supported by Mr. Missouri. Do you have any background on our new teacher? We have Lauren Wooster. Lauren Wooster is here with us today. Yeah. <laughs> nice to meet all of you. Oh! I'm excited to be back, and it's really nice to hear a little bit more about the district. And, and a Thornton Creeker, yeah. too. Cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Sensei last time was a uh, uh, student, and we have a Thornton Creek, which I'll be going to, and um, I'm really excited to be here. We are so lucky to have her. Let, me tell, you, let me tell you a little bit. I'm, I'm going to embarrass you a little bit, but um, <laughs> I do a lot of interviews. Um, I think we all do a lot of interviews so over a lifetime, and I know Beth, Beth and I sit uh, together in, in a lots of interviews. But you know when, a, when an applicant comes in and sits down um, and they make you feel at home <laughs> and they get you excited about teaching and learning about everything and you don't want that interview to end. That was what interviewing <laughs> Lauren Wooster was like. <laughs> and that was before I even found out that she was sitting in the elementary school that she 
went to when she was a child. <laughs> I mean, she she has a passion for Northville for teaching and learning. Um, she's coming to us from Livonia. She's been an ASD teacher there. Prior to that, she was at um, Lake Lakeview Public Schools. It's kind of out on the, on the east side. Um, she was a resource room teacher there. She's coming to us for um, an unexpected vacancy that happened this in the middle of this year, and uh, we we cannot be luckier. Her her um, the director of, of special services um, best counterpart. Um, told Beth that um, she's going to be very much missed in Livonia, and we are very lucky to have her. Um, we discovered that in, in the 35 minutes that we spent together, and then every minute since, um, um, because she is curious, and she asks questions, and uh, all of her questions are centered on what's good for kids. Um, so we are so excited that she is part of uh, going to become part of this team. So on behalf of Central Office Administration, we recommend um, to the Board of Education approve a probationary teacher contract for Lauren Wooster for the 23-24 school year. This seems like it's going to be a pretty easy vote. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I love your background for where you've been. I mean, Detroit, oh. a, 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 a stint in Mexico, yeah, um, St. Clair Shores in Livonia, you kind of really spread yourself out and you're a, a home, hometown grown girl. Yeah. Can I just say one more thing? Yeah. <laughs> just one more thing. <laughs> does, that, does anybody know Rita Hall? Yeah. She, yeah. she spent a lot of time with us in Northville. Um, she raised children here. <laughs> <laughs> One of them is sitting here right now. <laughs> no. And, and I didn't know that either until the end <laughs> when I was trying to place her. I'm like, she looks so familiar <laughs> because she looks like her mother. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, let's call the vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Welcome Thank aboard. You. Yes, welcome. Also pretty. Someone should be signing it. Should be a. I have. Right here. Yeah, it's wonderful. Okay. Do we have any added agenda items? There are none. There are none. Okay. And this is our second opportunity for public comment. Do we have any additional public comment? Going once, going twice. <laughs> okay. Um, questions and comments from board members. Anybody have anything? Oh, I do actually. Okay. Um, the next uh, Northville Youth Network overbooked um, book club is coming up. Let me double check my calendar. It's Thursday, April 25th at 6.30 and it's going to be at Winchester Elementary in the um, Media Center. Um, and the book, I always get the title slightly wrong, it's Raising Good Humans. Okay, cool. Raising Good Humans. So awesome. I think that could be a benefit to all of us, right? Because that's our goal. So that's it. That's all I had. All right. Well, uh, I would like to acknowledge that this Saturday we have the NEF um, casino night, and I hope that um, everybody who's in the community gives it some serious thought of attending. That is what, an important fundraising opportunity that benefits all kids in this district. So uh, I urge uh, people to participate. I also want to draw some attention to, I put a flyer on the back table that um, uh, New Hope Center for um, Grief is also having a fundraiser, and uh, let's see, that gala is on May 10th for, uh, to raise funds to support, to do their good work, but also to acknowledge them as a really fundamentally important partner in our district in the services that they bring our families and kids in coordination with uh, uh, the Youth Network as well as with our special services. So. Uh, as a district, we really we value them as a, an important partner, and and I am just urging that the community support their fundraiser on May 10th. And um, then finally, 
since everybody sitting in this room wears multiple hats and is committed to so many levels of uh, work in our district, I happen to be uh, a Ammerman grandparent right now, and so I put a flyer on the back table in regards to volunteer opportunities for our Bobcat Bash. I'm going to just put that out. Every school, in this, every elementary school has something similar running, so please support your own home schools if, if you're um, online or listening. But if you are inclined, there's lots of us old Ammerman folks around, and, it, and they are looking desperately for um, volunteers to help uh, run the, the games and the activities on the Bobcat Bash. And the Bobcat Bash is Friday, um, May 31st at Ammerman School, elementary school. Cool. So those are my, my community uh, uh, announcements. I'll just make one plug. We have the uh, State of the Community event coming up, and I think it was in your Friday note. I can't remember the day off the top of my head. The 26th. April 25th. But uh, put it on your calendars. Um, 26th. 26th. It, it's, a, it, it's a great event, and it really does. It's an opportunity to learn what's going on, all the community. But it's also the great opportunity to kind of see how the the three entities, the, the big three, so to speak, um, work together and, and, and accomplish things. I think it's... You know, it's part of the special sauce of what's make what makes Northville Northville, right? Um, Chelsea and that talked about, you know, getting involved in the community. But I think what makes us special is we're actually a very large district, seventy three hundred students, right, and and a population of like I don't know thirty five thirty nine thousand total. But yet we've got this small town feel, like Sarah talked about, right? And and it's it's hard to place what exactly that is, but that's part of the special sauce which makes Northville different from a lot of other communities, and we need to embrace that. We need to celebrate it, so um, I hope hope the entire, I know it's tough because a lot of people are working, but if you can plan it now, uh, plan that breakaway and attend, and I guess we're going to do it in Livonia this year, right? Yeah, ironically. Yeah. Ironically. <laughs> <laughs> We had a great, yeah, anything else about that? Nope, I just want to remind people and try to get it on your schedule. It's a great event, um, great celebration, and it's, you know, it's, it's, it allows us to also shake hands with our other fellow community members, and we know that those things are important. Building those relationships are really important. For sure. Yeah. Speaking of that, Northville Cares, we had an amazing meeting last week. I think it was the biggest meeting I'd ever attended. Um, so many community partners. We have a new community partner, Pathway of Joy, uh, who will be starting or who is joining our Northville Cares Network, which is awesome. I don't know if you know Pathway to Joy. Um, Hannah Joshin started that uh, nonprofit as a way to support kids. Um, and she's offering a summer camp and just really excited to see how that expands. One of the things that was uh, really exciting, though, was we were talking a little bit about how could we, we, we see kind of a gap, right, in Northville Cares that could we do something that's like parent camp light, but maybe invites kids as well. So we're looking to launch something like that in September, where we would talk about uh, maybe three topics is what we're working on, three specific topics that the kids would have their own breakout sessions, um, parents would be invited to come, parents of, of kids of any age could come, but we were targeting the, the kid portion for, I don't know, we're working on that, maybe second through eighth grade, um, but definitely some more development to do. But there was just a lot of enthusiasm in Northville Cares, and I want to say we had like 12 partner agencies. It was like, wow, <laughs> I think it took us. 30 Wonderful. minutes to go around the table for everyone to introduce each other and it was just really great to see the excitement and enthusiasm to support what our kids need so i would put the plug in for nef mm -hmm. event because they are going to be um, funding and supporting bringing in a speaker for this event along with all the work that they do for parent camp and all the other ways that they support our kids but it was great for kate mitchell to join us for that meeting and she was pretty excited and working her channels so just really thrilled to see when we, you know, when we identify a gap that people come in and say, yeah, let's, let's do it. Let's, let's figure out how we could fill that. So really awesome. So thanks Beth for sharing that along with Amy Prevo and Northville Youth Network. There will also be a mom prom that's happening <laughs> in a couple weeks and uh, Northville Youth Network is the charity for that. So I signed up. I thought that would be a really fun event. Too late to get tickets. I think there's still they have some resale ones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I have to go through it's tickets. like StubHub yeah, for mom <laughs> Except you just email the person who's leading. And they're not going to upcharge you. No. So that's and the it was the same <laughs> okay. So I, mom prom is on my list. So you okay. had something else? Just really quick. I totally forgot. Um, so last week on Thursday night, um, 
the elementary PTAs got together and planned a social media and kids event for um, current fifth graders and their parents so that they can talk to fifth graders before they get to middle school about um, cell phones and social media. Um, and Detective Norlock from um, Northville Township Police came and he did the first portion that was very like scared straight. Um, it was intense. I was sitting there like, geez, I have middle schoolers and that was a lot and a high schooler. And, whew, um, and I could see some of the fifth grade parents like clenched and very scared. Um, and then uh, after came, um, I'm- Carrie Biscalana. Yes, from Reset. thank you mm -hmm. from Reset. Um, and she talked about um, how to deal with social media with your kids as a family and making a plan and setting, you know, your family goals and intentions. Um, but also in attendance were all three of our school resource officers. Um, so it was a really awesome event and it was planned and coordinated by all of the elementary PTAs. So mm -hmm. um, I know there were a lot of comments um, afterwards about how wonderful it was and that the district should do more of that. I feel like we do a lot and so it's hard to do everything. Um, but I, I think it was a really good um, good event and hopefully um, the elementary PTAs can keep it going and continue it so I was hearing too that parents might have been interested for their younger kids right that yeah maybe the police presentation might be a lot for a second grader it might be something a little different than what he presented if you're going younger kids because it was it was a lot for fifth graders but I, I mean it I wasn't there but I know that there have been situations or I know from children because mm -hmm. the district hasn't that you know people are taking pictures of their Yes, Beautiful and little healthy bodies and putting them into circulation yeah. to catfish or whatever these people are, the criminals. Yeah. And so they're doing that in sixth grade. Exactly. And, probably, and, and actually, I know people who did it, whose children did it in fourth grade um, and put it on YouTube. So as scary as it is. Exactly. And that, that was Detective Norlock was very clear about the fact that it's a, it's a big topic but it's necessary and it's happening to kids who are younger than any of the parents in the room would ever want to acknowledge that that something like that's happening. So, yeah. Thanks for that. Thanks for that. I, I'm sorry I missed that. Um, my comments are quick. Um, I, at the risk of opening a can of worms, which I don't know enough about yet, I would just say that my vote in general would be the street stays together on districting um and i guess someone could explain mm -hmm. to me why a street wouldn't stay together um but i would want my street to be together and i get that so i don't know what the process would be for that to come forward but um i that would be where I, my thumb would come down on that um without f different information um and then a good um, sort of jumping point from the social media and kids issue. Um, I know everybody had a long meeting. I'm sorry I had to miss it last week and that there was a lot covered. I know that for the second meeting, committee of the whole, second committee of the whole, there was talk about the phones. I did circulate that I think that it's something that we should actually bring into a actual board meeting and that there should, this is an issue that deserves to have something other than committee discussion on. Um, I don't know exactly what the vote would be. I think I got a number of different updates from different board members about what the you know discussion was. So I, I know those weren't, aren't recorded, but um, I did try to do my homework and find out. And so I don't want to um, 
step on anybody's you know thoughts or make people repeat themselves but i do feel really strongly that this so what i'm saying to the audience is uh, that i had asked meetings and meetings ago that we vote or have some discussion about phones um and screen time in school um and i really think that we ought to not punt that down the road down the road down the road i think it's worth having a vote and so I'd asked if we could do it this week but Lindsay isn't here and wanting to make sure everybody can be involved so I'm hoping that we can do that next week um, I, I know that meeting is a special call and we're going to do bargaining in a closed session so um, you know if someone told me well we can't do it next week I just want to bring that forward yeah makes sense we can certainly talk about it more I think the board um, to make sure I sent you a note. I mean, it wasn't that we punted it down. We just said to implement something, you don't want to do it right now. We talked about implementing it at the beginning of the next school year in September, especially when the fact that we were going to have a new principal at Meads Mill and would it would allow an opportunity for for Hillside and Meads to come up with a consistent approach because that was that was an important piece of it. There was a debate about. Do, you know, it's really not a policy, so to speak. So it may not necessarily have to have a board vote, but certainly if we want to bring attention to it, we could certainly make it as part of a board meeting to, you know, to bring more focus on it and, and bring bring the board's uh, opinion more more public than necessarily a committee of the whole. I'm not going to let, let the board decide how you want to do it, but but I'm I'm open either way. But I think the the general consensus was that we would move forward with it, um, but the timing of it would be at the beginning of the school year. But obviously, you have to start communicating that before the school year started. Um, so the key thing was let's get our new Meads Mill principal hired, and then allow you know allow the, the two of them to come to a consensus on on the approach. Right? Do you do you do the Meads approach, which is kind of no no phone at all? You know, eight, eight to whatever. Yeah, away for the day. Yeah, away for the day versus, you know, hillside, which is a little bit no phone except for lunch period. Um, and there's a debate about, you know, I think between our principals about which way is the best. And I'm, okay. But I think we need to be consistent. Yeah, and I don't want to get into the merits of it here without Lindsay, yeah. but I, I guess I just... Um, I don't know when a new print vice principal or excuse me principal will be here um they're gonna drink from the fire hose unless they're the assistant vice principal right now <laughs> or the like head teacher there for the last 20 years if they aren't that then they're going to be new to the community and i don't know why we would hand a person who's drinking from the fire hose and maybe even new to the community a question that um, goes to our culture. I don't know why it's not a policy of the board. What f happens with cell phones? Like, w why is that? And even if it is a poli isn't a policy of the board, like we we set standards and operating procedures and whatnot as well. So I, I just I understand that there was some discussion of letting someone that we don't know who they are come up with something with Bill Jones, but I, I just. I mean, I don't agree with that. If that if that means that the board isn't going to have a say or be the decider, I, I don't like the board. We don't say like, and we just frankly we just saw an upset parent about leaving things to the different <laughs> middle schools. That's an operational thing, but I mean, I, I just we don't let them decide like we'll have Spanish and we won't or will will teach digital citizenship but we won't like so i don't agree with it and i think that was lindsay didn't want it decided when he wasn't here tonight and i don't want it decided when i wasn't there and not only was i not there but i i can't even watch the discussion because right. it was this committee of the whole um and not only can i not watch the discussion but i understand the minutes were changed from the meeting before so the minutes aren't i mean so i, I just think it's it's worthy of a public discussion and and a discussion that involves the opportunity for public comment and frankly I think the board should step up and make some decisions it's an important issue yeah to and me it's it's yeah. worthy of a of a public conversation right that um, maybe getting some more data um, 
I don't know. I mean, there's going to be data that can go either way on this topic, I think. Um, but definitely, I'm, I'm in support of airing kind of our perspectives and having the conversation and getting landing on a place where we say, okay, this is, this is our philosophy. This is what we want to see move forward. Um, you know, to hear, I think we learned some things about Meets Mill, right? That they do have, that they do let kids earn access to their phone at lunch. Right. Um, that's different than what we had known before. So, you know, I think also hearing from the building leaders was something that we were curious to know more from their, right, their perspective. We've been invited to come in and check out Hillside. Uh, I hope to go do that next week myself just to understand, right, that I don't want to walk in with one bias about what the lunchtime looks like and then realize, okay, it's really, it's not a huge deal. Um, and then I think there's also like the PTA piece, like how do we start to change culture a little bit around giving prepubescent kids smartphones? That is that, some, I don't know that, that that's not a board thing, right? That's a community thing, but we are embedded in the community. So how do we start to have dialogue? We talk a lot about mental health. We're seeing this uptick in some of these racially charged situations that where's that coming from? Um, so how do we start to, you know, as a community have conversations that how do we treat each other as a small town and small town residents and hold each other accountable for the safe kind of community that we want our kids to grow up in. I think that everybody, um, at least uh, the outcome of the meeting that we had that you weren't able to be uh, present at, was that we would continue the conversation and have it publicly so the, the community can attend, they can come in and pub, you know, at the appropriate times, but that it, it would it would uh, require further discussion when everybody's here. So I think that, I don't think there's any disagreement about that. There's not early closure. There's not, you know, it's still evolving. So how does that work? Do we ask to be added to the agenda for the next meeting? If everyone's going to be present? Well, if it's, so again, let's, let's step back for a second, right? Um, and I think the board agreed that we wanted to have a consistency. Um, if we're going to write a, policy which we said we probably didn't have to write a policy that that's a bigger effort we're gonna have to write a policy then, right and i don't know that the board i don't think any of the board signed up last week that we, we needed to write a policy on it uh, okay. but we certainly could make our intentions known um in a way that way to communicate it so i guess you know, when we left last week and, and, and this is in fairness to sarah so we're consistent here we kind of gave um aaron some guidance to hey we, we want you know we gave guidance on when to do it, which is the beginning of the school year. We thought there was value in having the, the two new principals. You know, Bill Jones has a very opinion about what he thinks works and why he thinks it works. Uh, but we said it probably would have some value um, to have the new principal involved in that discussion um, and then figure out how to roll it out. So I guess we need to decide is, do we need a new policy? Because we decided last week we didn't have to necessarily be a policy. We can certainly make it as a discussion point in a formal board meeting and make it, um, you know, maybe have a couple of conversations so that we invite the community to give feedback. And I mean, that's, that's something we could definitely do. Uh, but I just want to be consistent with where we left last week's meeting versus where we're at today. So Yeah, and, and I would just say that, I mean, I'm a little bit behind. I wasn't here. The meeting I left it was like six people were saying, I think we should, okay. I mean, the teachers had been represented as being very in favor of an away for the day thing. We had a discussion about it. I think it was different reasons to come to the same conclusion. I like we disagreed on away for the day. It's just that the definition of the way away for the day schools are doing it slightly differently. Right. And I'm like, okay, I could, I can see, I think there's consistent on the board of away for the day, but how it's implemented can be slightly different, right? Is a way for the day, it's a way in the locker or not to be seen except for lunch hour, which is Bill's approach, or is it a way for the day period, which I thought, you know, was Mead's approach, but it turns out Mead's even let, let people earn rewards to bring it out. And like, well, then it's really not a way for the day. So we wanted consistency. I think you wanted consistency. I agree with that. I thought 
there were diff- I was starting to say, I think there were different approaches that got to the same result. Like I was talking about K-12, right? And Aaron was going to go back and talk to the 12, you know, the 9 through 12. And I think we didn't have any input from them. We had more heard about teachers K-8. And there was some question. And then it was like, Wolverines will fight us and we might die if we try to take the phones. And so they were going to go back. But I left here thinking, and so did Megan or whoever was taking the notes, that there was basically a consensus of phones away for the day like meads and I think your point was it's a consistency and other people like maybe me um were like I think phones are hurting people's mental health right like that's my concern and Melissa wasn't here so it's like she didn't get a say but like I feel like it's gone back and forth and we don't vote at committees of the whole and so the simple fact of the matter is the whole board at one meeting has not been able to di- to right, discuss right, this. Right, right. So what I'm saying is I think that it should, and I don't care if we call it a policy or if we call it a practice or whatever, but I think, like, you know, this has been something that I've been really concerned about ever since we heard so much from the community about mental health and their basic unanimity left to right on, you know, taking more measures. Um, so... I, I think it's just something that we should okay. take. Let's, let's, and if, let's put it on a formal board meeting and have a, another discussion. Sure. And, yeah, and, absolutely. Yeah. and again, I, I don't know that it's necessarily a policy, but let's have the discussion with everyone so we get some consistency among our board. <laughs> right, right, right. Right? That we all and then, the and then we can kind of move from there. I have kind of a procedural question about board policy, and I'm hoping that the two of you have some experience on this because the board policies that we've worked on up to this point have needed to be uh, policies that have needed to be updated and or driven by changes in the law. So has it been your experience that we have ever, or the board, I shouldn't say we, that the board has ever made a decision and then therefore a policies had to be drawn up? Not all policies are, are absolutely uh, driven by legal. We've had policies in the past that aren't a legal issue. No, yeah. So we, we can do that, right? It's it, it, it's just what we, what do we as a board? I'm just not, I'm just not experienced with it. Wanna, That's why I'm asking. I want to remind that sometimes you may already have a policy that even broadly covers this. And typically what then happens is an administrative procedure aligned to that policy is created. Okay. You may already have a procedure that vaguely covers this topic, but doesn't explicitly cover it. So that's work that we would have to do. That's exactly what I was just going to say. It might become a procedural thing that's agreed upon by the board, but you leave it up to us to, to kind of procedure it out. So I've already jotted down a note to, to look through our board book, our, our, our reg book, as well as the Miller Johnson board book to see if there's something that perhaps you could start with, if you get to that point. And, and those procedures, sometimes like the teachers can cite them, the stat, the, the building leaders can cite them and say, well, this is our procedure, right? Like, where is that written? It's in our book. Okay. Like, it just, it, it's not necessarily that it has to be a two vote policy with, it's, you know, policy number 1012. Right in order to have some level of like the board has spoken about what the community feeling is. I, I do. I think one thing that I really took away from our, because I missed the first one where everyone got to talk about it. And then, you know, so I think one thing that I really took away from our last committee of the whole was that K through five, it's already, you know, the policy that there's no phones. Um, and then Meads Mill and Hillside, while the big difference is, you know, the lunchroom, they both have a consistent um, a way for the day when it comes to instructional time and classroom time. I um, thought at Hillside it was teacher specific. Like they have the sign. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I mean, ideally, Mead starts with the basis that they're not allowed in classrooms unless told otherwise. Hillside starts with the basis that they're allowed in the classroom if the teacher says so, but 90% of the teachers have red lights on their doors, which means they're not allowed in their classrooms, and they already have red zones like bathrooms, locker rooms. Yeah. Certain parts of the building are not allowed, and green zones are really just the cafeteria and when a teacher allows. So that's where it came into this idea of, like, we're just using two different sets of words to say the same thing except for lunch. Lunch is a distinct difference. I would ask the board if, the, if this is going to be a public conversation that 
I, even if it's just a 10 minute version to share the same information. Mm -hmm. So that the public also hears that information of what's been done to this point. Cause I'd want to make sure the high school teachers and high school students input was shared yes. as well as some of the conversations that are. I, I'm not, I, 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 okay. So l let me say something that I didn't say, which may be helpful to everybody. I don't, did never got a huge, and I said, so there are going to be parents who disagree with this. Cause there have been parents who are like, I went to, I think I mentioned you weren't here that I'd been at the high school PTA and that this had, well, you and I were there mm -hmm. and, and like it had come up and like, it was pretty like, like Jody was very like, I don't think we should have them K, K, K 12, right? Like it's, it's disruption. And I don't think I heard any like teacher support for nine twelve not having phones. Except for the health department. <laughs> they want to make sure you know that. <laughs> Mr. Kostriva and Mr. Laddick would like you to know they do not want so <laughs> They matter. They're, this is all about health, right? Um, I would be remiss if I did not tell you how passionately would, they feel was, about it. I was talking about K. I would vote K-12, but I think it sounds like there's more sense that we're closer to K-8 anyway than 912, right. if that makes it helpful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a much bigger ball of wax to attack 912, although I think mental health stuff is really serious there but it is also about like how do you build momentum right mm -hmm. that as we're talking about like screen wise or the conversation with the social media piece from last mm -hmm. week the PTA like it's to me it's a little bit how do you build momentum change. to yeah. start to intervene yeah. at a younger age that and I think there's science that suggests that the earlier exposure the worse mm -hmm. like the longer you can it's like alcohol or cigarettes like the longer you can delay the better so I think that's another aspect for that. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we've now had a whole discussion. And now we're discussing the discussion. <laughs> the discussion. <laughs> uh, let's put it on the formal agenda. Let's have a discussion. We, we can present the data. Because there was some very good data about yeah. we're already doing a K-5, through five, which yeah, is basically yeah, yeah. No, no phones at all. Um, 9 through 12, we got feedback from both students and teachers that said, I, I probably don't want to go I there. I did see the yeah. slide. And then, yeah. and then yeah. you know, then the real discussion was about, you know, 6 to 8 middle school. And, yeah. you know, we, we, we kind of just said, you know, away for the day is a good approach. We support that. But how you define it. And implement it. And, and implement it was slightly different. The two different it. principles had slightly different, which effectively was doing the same thing, but yeah. in slightly different ways. It's like... Do you want to die on the cross for, uh, and I don't mean that, I'm just going overboard, but a lunch hour. Oh, well, is lunch hour, you know, so that's where the debate kind of talked about. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, I think it's good for us to put it on our agenda. But I do think it, it would be good to, to be make it a next formal. Week. Yeah, yeah, I don't, it may not be. I'll try to go with you to. Yeah, to go to lunch, lunch too. But yeah, we can yeah, have a discussion good. so that it's formally on a board meeting and we can, you know, allow public to give their feedback. Mm -hmm. I also think it would be beneficial for Mr. Jones to have an opportunity to share his thoughts, not necessarily at a board meeting, which he's also willing to do, but if you're able to take over a visit over there during lunch, just so he has the ability to share his thoughts with you. Yeah, um, As a means to change the subject as well, but also to put a plug in for um, our elementary principals are running a unified book study uh, together with all six schools at once with a book called Good Inside. Um, it'll take yeah. place on May 13th at Ridgewood, but all six elementary schools are running it together and the principals are leading the discussion. So on May 13th at uh, 6.30 at Ridgewood's library, the book Good Inside, and if you have not registered, look at their newsletters, it's in every one of them. Uh, the first 15 at each school will get a free copy of the book, <laughs> but others will have to purchase their own. So if it's not already the first 15 already in, you may be able to get a free copy of the book, um, but then all parents will come together from all six schools on the 13th of May. So I that's that. to be, our parents genuinely, especially at parent camp, they love having these conversations with our principals. So I just hope that people see it because those newsletters can be full of a lot of things and the author of that book is phenomenal she has a great instagram page and i'm facebook too i think but she gives parents a lot of good scripts for having difficult conversations at times that validate feelings and talk about you know other choices and it's like i feel like i don't know it's it's great it's like embedded in what we're doing so these are all the things connection between home and school i think so you said a couple of weeks ago, like a shout out to all the all the different things that everyone attends. And I just want to echo that again this week. I mean, I learned a lot of great information and wonderful things that are happening around our community. 
So thank you for that and all your time outside of these meetings. Um, I just, this is my second year in a row living with one, so I have to give a shout out or lift up our juniors this week. This is a really tough week. And then if any of our legislators are watching, it's too much. Um, so, you know, I, I not, I obviously as a school district, we have to give the test, but I think it's a lot of testing. Um, and especially since we use that testing uh, as a school district to see, to see how we're doing um, for our students. Um, but if you're, my husband always says he burns a lot of calories working in his, you know, he's his brain. I really I was really hungry because I've been working so hard. So if your juniors are really hungry, that's because they've been thinking a lot this week, I guess. Um, I just want to shout them out because it's, it's a lot to ask them to take three big tests in a row and then also have to go to school two of those days afterwards. And if the legislators are listening, where keys can go. Yeah, that's, I, I said that. It needs to go. I, I yes, I. It. Yes, I, I, I try to say that. <laughs> I can get it. Say it again. What needs to go? The ACT, ACT work keys. Yes. It's been on the legislation's desk for three work different keys. bills. Mm -hmm. It's a test. It's a form of a test that's given as the third piece. So you get the SAT, the MME, which is science and social studies, and then the work keys test, which is um, not beneficial. We do not use the data in any way here because it doesn't provide benefit. And it has been up for removal by the state three times. And a vote has never come to fruition, so we would <laughs> love for that to go away. We have because some great so lobbyists over at the ACT work keys. <laughs> yeah, I'm curious they, they how probably have some. You know, ACT lost the contract a few years ago to SAT. It was a big deal because we gave the ACT for so many years here. And so I don't know what's going on, but it's still here and it needs to go. Yes. Yeah, I'm not really sure the students put a ton of effort into that particular test because they but, don't find the value in it either. And I also, you know, I would be remiss not to mention all our staff that are proctoring these tests for the three days as well. As uh, Also, as we, I know we did it in the fall, but also once again implementing the digital aspect of the SAT well, and the PSAT this week. Well, school's in an uproar. I mean, the buses run different. And yes. Everybody has to ch the parents have to come at different. Yes. I mean, if they come or the kids wander home or whatever. I don't know. Yes, yes. It's Yes. It's unbelievable. It is a lot. The, the lucky oh. sophomores get to like the sophomores not go to school in and out most <laughs> of the week. I'm yeah. like, what do you mean? Yeah. You're just yeah. home? Oh, what's happening? Seniors have it even better. <laughs> I know. <laughs> they do. They do. They do. They know it. Study and yeah. the Many of them will be at elementary schools on Friday helping out and or doing service projects and or work at school craft doing on-site visit, so yep. no. I, yeah, can't give them. A parent too much looked it like. up and was really appreciative today. Someone that I know from the community about the free co college at Schoolcraft, and yeah. so we talked about that and the opportunity um, to get an associate's degree for free. So that was really neat to hear a parent, you know, talking about that in action for their kiddo. Who, it's a couple hundred thousand dollars savings for us yeah. next year, which is great. Plus, it means more college for kids, and we have our first group of fifth year students next year five oh, students who will be finishing five. their associates next year the yeah, first group awesome. to come through that's so cool and that's all of their schooling next year is free we don't have to pay for it amazing awesome good work that's all right good stuff northville schools yeah <laughs> all right let's call us adjourned at 8 47. Thank okay. you. Good night. Very well. Good <laughs> <laughs> it's an early night. Yay! <laughs>